maca. The maca is used in uh, South America, more from Peru. It's very good. Now, they don't have a whole herbalism system in the way like the Chinese do. They have lots of herbs, though. Lots and lots of herbs, many of which we have not heard of here. And I was in Peru and thinking of getting a bunch of different herbs to help with the diabetes, and I realized, well, this is really too hard to reproduce. But the Amazon is unique, okay? Ma maca is one of the stars of this unique thing. So maca is a very yang chi uh, builder. Uh, well, you more yang in a way. But it also will work on postnatal jing. But it's pretty much endocrine, pretty much qi. It's very good for uh, really, I'll say the whole endocrine system. Not a lot of people use it for um, thyroid. But it really works for thyroid, adrenals, um, and uh, ovaries and testes, and it's generally activating the whole endocrine chain. For men, they use it for potency. Women, they use it to increase the sexual drive or desire. It's definitely considered an aphrodisiac. In general, it increases your life force energy, which is, again, a little bit more uh, uh, a chi. Uh, uh, thing. Um, obviously, there's some jing with that, but it's still chi. Uh, it's said to help with menses, but I, I actually did research for a, a, a maca company, and um, we didn't. I could not prove that it actually helped. They weren't very happy with that, but it's like, hey, here's the protocol. It's not working. <laughs> You know, what, what can I tell you? So we, we don't want to overrate it. The other thing we noticed is it raises your blood sugar. Raises the blood sugar. So I don't recommend it in diabetics. It doesn't, it's not super raised, but will raise the blood sugar 10, 15 points. So I don't really recommend it for that. But generally, it's just a virility kind of thing and, and life force. You know, take maca and it gives you energy to get through the day. Uh, what, what is it? I mean, it's a root. I don't know what it's it a root. Is it something you can grow in your garden or in a pot? Or yeah, if you live in South America. <laughs> I don't think you can grow it in Israel, but I may be wrong. Yeah, it's high up in the mountains. It can extend, it, it fits the Chinese idea of adaptability, extreme cold and extreme warm. So it's high, usually high in the Andes, as far as I understand. That's all I can really say about it. I think it's a little overrated, but it definitely works as a general tonic for the endocrine system. And therefore, when the endocrine system is tonified, you're going to have more sexual energy, more physical energy, more life force energy. It so varies according to, are you getting super maca, are you getting maca, are you getting this, you know, and then. Um, you can take, with the super maca, which is like very strong maca, a tablespoon three times a day. It's a, it's a powerful dose, but it's not, I'm telling you the upper limit. But you can say, wow, that's too activated. I'll just take a teaspoon once a day. But you can take up to a tablespoon three times a day. A lot of people with adrenal exhaustion or low thyroid will, will, will test for maca. Yeah, well, I, I think that fits with what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of, besides it not working for menses, it kind of stimulates that whole process, mm -hmm. the hormonal process. And so you're, you would amplify that, I think, you know. 
that. I don't know if there's a lot of research on it, but that would be my feeling. I'm very hesitant to use for menstrual problems. Plus, as I say, the research that I did didn't, didn't show any difference in PMS and so forth and so forth. Well, I mean, does maca help with that? I can't answer that. I don't think there's been a study for polycystic ovaries, okay? Um, iodine helps, and uh, low blood sugar helps. Sugar will activate polycystic ovaries, yeah. Yeah. It's depend if you put it in hot water or in cold water? Uh, I'm not sure, but usually people who just take it, don't need to put it in hot water. It's not dependent on that, no.